we will do a, uh, we will get everyone to lunch on time. <laughs> so, hello everyone, and nice to see some faces we haven't seen in a little while, so welcome, and thanks for being here. Um, Adam and I are both going to sort of tag team and talk about this exhibit that we just opened last Friday, no, last a week, whenever, Thursday, Thursday. last Thursday. Um, and as you can see by the title, um, we are talking about different things that artists have used to make sculpture. Uh, a lot of the work that we talk about in, the, in this collection, I don't know what the percentage is, but a lot of the work that we have in the collection is bronze. So we talk about that, that is the kind of work that so far we have out on the sculpture trail. Um, but we've got a lot of pieces in the collection that are made out of a whole bunch of different kinds of things. So that is what we're thinking about in this exhibit and trying to pull out really interesting, maybe a couple examples of different, different things uh, sculptors were using. Um, and uh, let's see. Um, we've got over here behind Susan and Bobby, we've got the most sort of recent piece in the collection, which was made in, I mean, in this exhibit, 2012. And then we have, over here by me, the oldest works in the collection, uh, yeah, oldest works in the collection from about 2500 BC. So people have been making, making sculpture out of different things for a very long time and making images of animals. Um, so, some of the different things that we've got going on in this room involve, uh, let's see, I've got them right behind you, I'm going to go look at this. <laughs> we've got uh, carving methods going on in, in this room, we've got ca different, different casting methods, um, and we've got modeling methods. Uh, another way that artists work that we don't have in here is uh, the sort of found object uh, putting together of things. But um, so uh, maybe just stop looking at me and turn around and look at what you've got behind you. <laughs> and I might just uh, go around the room and talk about, a, a, about them as we go. Um, if we start over here, let's see. Above Mary, hi Mary. <laughs> we have uh, three glass pieces in the collection. This is a glass lamp um, with a, uh, a cut out metal piece over the glass with a light behind it. So um, some of the ways that artists use, that's a really interesting way to use light and to, to think about a, uh, a flat piece of metal becoming a three-dimensional piece. We have, I'm going to point around the room. The other two pieces of glass that we have in the room are a uh, incredibly beautiful hand-blown squid piece. And I haven't seen it, but Adam, when it came, it came all of the tentacles are separate pieces. So. He had to unwrap them very carefully and play, stick them in. So you can rearrange the tentacles, which is a really, really cool thing about that sculpture is that we get to arrange it a little bit. Um, and then also, and then I was just talking about uh, this piece over here, the Jane Rosen. Both of these glass pieces are hand blown. Possibly uh, the Jane Rosen was uh, hand blown and then also molded a little bit while that glass was still hot. Um, so we've also got, uh, I'll just mention, we've got a little bit of a glass blowing on this video over here. So there are three different methods in this room that we've got tiny snippets of people's hands using those techniques. So stone carving, uh, <coughs> glass blowing, and uh, woodworking. So this glass. That so is, that's a yeah, that's 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 a not glass. That's a 
So yeah. you know when you have a, those like an epoxy glue and you combine the two elements together and it, it starts this chemical reaction. Um, from what I read, the mixing of acrylic is a very similar process. You mix these two elements together, pour them into a mold while they're still liquid, and then of course it go, takes the shape of the mold. You peel the mold away, and you have a, an amazing crystal clear acrylic uh, sculpture. Um, and to rough it up. Uh, to make it not all clear, um, we're pretty sure he used a little tool to rough up the, the surface of it to re to create the say the shape of the penguin there, or to make the shape of the penguin stand out. And then on the inside, this is kind of a fun trick of the eye. Uh, depending on where you're standing, you might think that there are three penguins, but really there's a positive penguin here and a negative penguin back there, and due to the reflection. It seems like there are two of those penguins in the back. Um, so that's another really modern method, probably the most modern method that's in here. Um, glass is, you know, a fairly old, uh, ancient method. Um, this is really a, a crazy piece uh, using a method of sculpting, or a method of casting, that they developed in the early 1900s, late 1800s, called electrotype. So this isn't a bronze. It wasn't cast using the last lost wax method. Um, in this uh, method of casting, it is, uh, it's fairly complicated, but I'll try to summarize it. You take the object that you want to replicate, you coat it in graphite, you put it in a um, sulfite bath, you take a piece of copper, you put it in the same bath, you attach um, an electric charge to each piece, and the copper molecules migrate from the bar to the graphite, because the graphite becomes positive and the <coughs> copper becomes negative, and eventually it builds up this copper surface over the thing that you wanted to have rep replicated. Um, so then you take it out and you've got this copper uh, reproduction of what the original was. So my simplified version the other day was that it is a metal casting process that uses positive and negative charges. How long is the eventually? Is that, it, how, you said eventually. How long does the process take? I don't know. You don't know if it it's takes a, week a while. Or six years or No, a week. <laughs> so, another question is are people still using this process today so, or was it an experiment? It was, it, probably they are, but not for this kind of application. Um, if you compare this to a bronze, and you're talking about its stability, longevity, um, basic ability to stand the test of time, uh, this creates a very soft uh, sculpture. Um, we think that it's copper on top and then lead on the bottom of it to stabilize it, but in the end it becomes very soft and it's not as hard or as durable as bronze. And you can see that it's been through some hard times in its life. Uh, this is a repair and we kind of left the repair noticeable so you could tell that this whole piece had come off. There's a ripped edge right there. Um, so, was this the one that Ron brought back from the Ron brought this back from, from Chicago. Chicago. From the yeah. They put it in the back of his pickup truck, yes. is that right? Yes, exactly. Wow. So it was donated by the Chicago Arts Institute and a guy named uh, William Winslow. And I I don't know this for sure, but the two Kemi's uh, bar reliefs that are out there that are part of this exhibit were cast by the Winslow Brothers Foundry in the early 1900s. So there may be some relationship there. We haven't investigated. Uh, is this, so this uh, isn't that. is this clay basically, or or something yeah. that it's done on? It's it's solid. This process, or is it? Yeah, how do you mold? Or, yeah, or is the mold made out of some other material, and then this is attached to the mold? To the clay or wood or whatever. Well, you would, okay, you take your sculpture, you create made the negative, of, made of, whatever, but, clay, clay. Okay. plaster. Is you this could, clay or plaster? No, you could cast a rock if you wanted to. Okay. So you take your sculpture made out of whatever material you want, right. you make a negative mold of it, you pull that off, and then the copper molecule is attached to the inside of that. Oh. Then you pull the copper out, oh. and it's a replica of your original thing. So it's hollow? Yes, yeah, so it's hollow. Oh. And so they sprayed the... Uh, so this is a thin sheet of copper, yeah. 
and then they've sprayed some lead or something on the back side of it to give it some stability. But it is really not a stable uh, entity. I see. It's delicate. It's hollow. Yes. And wasn't it the one that was stolen? Well, that is a myth uh, that may be true and may be not. Um, <laughs> what was your question? I'm sorry. Oh, what the process is called. Electrotype. There's some really good descriptions of it over there. And online, on the Metropolitan's website, there is an awesome video that shows you how this happens. And it's way better than my this demonstration. So. <laughs> it looks so solid and heavy. That it like well, that's true. I mean, think about some of our other bronzes. which are all hollow inside. They look like they're a full piece of metal, but really, the most economical way to do it is not to have it be a solid piece of metal. Adam, does this weigh a lot? It does weigh a ton. Maybe not a ton. Maybe not a ton, but it weighs a ton. So, it's not fun to move. And it's been on this uh, rolling uh, pedestal for its entire life, and it doesn't really ever need to come off of that. So that's probably the, the, the strangest technique that we've got. The other ones are more basic. Uh, Leo Osborne you know, is using a burled wood piece that he found and incorporating part of the natural uh, elements in the burl into his design, and then carving out other parts of it. Um, that uh, is another great wood piece that's related to the Pope painting in the JKM gallery, where that's a trompe l'oeil that's trying to fool your eye. Uh, this also is sort of a trompe l'oeil. It's trying to get you, or it's not a trompe l'oeil, it's trying to get you to think that that's a hanging duck on a basket, but really it's a wood carving. Um, so other carving, so carving is one of the methods, so other carving methods besides wood are over here in the corner is a stone piece with, by Ross Madison and that is also carved but with um, different kinds of tools uh, but it's, ta it's basically it's taking a chunk and then, and then uh, subtracting away from that chunk carving into and bringing out the piece from it. Um, what the same kind of bird is that? That is a grouse. <laughs> so it's all one piece of uh, Belgian black marble. He's just treated the surfaces differently and they look different. So one is very shiny because he has polished it. Uh, one is gray because he's treated it that way and the bait. So it's all one piece of wood that he has carved away at. So, stone, stone, sorry, stone. Also, uh, is this beautiful piece here, it's same, the same method. A chunk of marble that was carved away. So, um, and then what is interesting is, the uh, same with these, these were a, a rock um, that were carved away. So a subtractive process. And then right here behind you guys, we've got a clay piece that was probably worked two different ways. So the clay was built up into a chunk and then it was carved away to get to get this piece. It's a terracotta clay clay piece. So this one's really, really fun when you're when we're done, come up and look at it because it is incredible the detail that um, this artist has gotten out of clay. It's really hard to do. And then two more clay pieces over here that are one is hand built clay, so taking a chunk of clay and then building the pot up from there. And then uh, this Picasso piece is different parts that are thrown and then probably cast later and then attached together. So, <laughs> and then also, um, and if we're going around this way, we've got two plaster pieces. Uh, this bison head up here, which was probably built up plaster, and then we've got this Anaheim Huntington plaster that's the back yawning tiger, uh, is it a tiger, um, that was cast plaster. <laughs> so there's a bronze and a plaster there cast that were both. Yep, yeah, you can put you can in cast anything in a mold. So if you have a mold, you can pour any you you know if it's the right kind of mold, you can pour anything into it. You was it then used as a mold for the? It probably bronze? was just made for itself as a plaster. We think that she made it for a friend of hers and gave it. To, the story is that she toned it, gave it the color herself, and then gave it to a friend. Huh.
Are some of these stone pieces you said, you said that were being carved, and I, I'm, I'm late here getting. No, that's good. But are they carved with? It looks like they were almost carved with an abrasive gun or. So water. right behind here, over by Frank, and yeah. that's actually on right now. We've got Steve Kestrel's hands carving the beginning of one of his pieces. So he's an artist that's in our collection. Um, and he's basically, it looks like, on this one, it looks like he's using an electric uh, dental, dental tool, tool, but it's for, <laughs> um, but it's for, so he uses uh, really high-powered electric tools to break away the, um, the stone to put his detail in. Oh, which is really cool. So one more, there are a few more pieces. If you guys turn around and look out, Adam was talking about the two bronze uh, bas-reliefs that are right to the right of the gallery, which is a casting method with bronze. And then right in front of you, we have this really great um, piece that is carved wood. So that was a giant chunk of wood that was carved by hand, and then uh, the red color was put on afterwards. Um, yeah. Amazing. So that's yeah. It was once. I, so I was gone when when these guys put this together uh, last week, um, and just walking into the room, it was really amazing to me to see how many different kinds of sculpture we have, and all the different methods and ways that people have yeah. used to create these beautiful things. Are all of these in our collection. Everywhere. Everything's yeah. in our collection. Most of the time, we're talking about the lost wax method. If it's brown, so. Uh, do we have that here? So, there's that great display at the end of the King Gallery where you have all of the models for the whole lost wax process and the kiosk that tells that whole story. So the bronzes that were lost wax here are probably this uh, Anaheim Huntington and the Kemi's, although those might be sand casting, but we don't need to get it. It's bronze. <laughs> it's bronze. Um, so, yeah, amazing great. array. Yes, Thanks, guys. Um, do, do you think that any of the artists, like, if they are doing wood carving, would they typically just, like, have a sketch and or something and start with the wood, or do they have a practice with, like, clay, or, like, do they ever, I guess what I'm asking is, do artists ever use different media as they're working in the process? I would say all of the above. <laughs> I would say probably some artists are just taking a piece of wood, carving it, and there you've got it. But some some artists are working on little tiny uh, maquettes or prototypes as they're going, and then uh, then starting on their bigger piece. So maybe yes, working in clay first, and then going to the bigger piece. I think that that one is fired, yes. It is fired. So it would have to be hollow in the center or it would explode. So they didn't do a chance? Well, probably, if, if you did have a piece that was that uh, thick, it may have a hole underneath it. I don't know. But also, you can poke um, a needle up in the... Right, up through it and hopefully get rid of any air pockets that might be in there. Also, if you fire it slow enough, low enough in the beginning, the gases can get out, even if there's a pocket in there and it won't explode. So you just have to do it really slow. <laughs> do all these pieces belong to the museum? Yes, they're all from our collection. Okay. The only borrowed pieces this summer are in Charlie Russell. That's it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, we'll let you guys get ready for your uh, lunch, and thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.